Okay, we are recording. Um, this is uh, Durwood King, and this is the, the class is ELC 111 Intro to Electricity. And this is August the 27th. And um, we are in uh, chapter two um, in our book. And thank you for joining. Hello. That's not that's not them at all. Okay, McGill's getting in it, getting in in three minutes. Yeah. He's charging his laptop. Okay. All right. All righty. So we'll go ahead and start, and we're not going to go fast. We're going to go slow. I don't want to hold y'all up. They, the beginning part, they, they can catch up on. The one thing I'm going to do before we start the chapter is I'm going to go over um, this information here. Katie wants to order three of them for me for your Christmas present. Now, do y'all see the, the blue page there? Yeah. Yes. Is this something, I think I gave y'all one of those in the, in the shop the other day, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Did. Now, let's briefly go over these definitions one more time. Do, do you see the screen blanking out? Yeah, mine just blanked out. Yeah, mine did too. There we go. And I'm not sure why it did that. It blanked out again, didn't it? Yes, sir. When I when I touch the mouse, then it then it quits that. Let me see what's going on here. I gotta maybe maybe it won't do that anymore. It's strange when I move the mouse and it comes back. Well, I've got an unusual thing. I guess I'll have to, um, I can make do with it for right now. But the three basic measurements that we do in electrical is voltage, current, and resistance. Now, the basic meter that, that y'all were using You start out with the most basic one. It has those three, those three uh, settings on there. This is unusual. Why? Why? Why is it doing that? Um, this the screen. Let's see if it. What's going on here? Let me resync. Let me resync it. Hold on. I, I, this is unusual. Just give me a second. Sorry about that. I got an idea. Let me let me try something here. I'm gonna do stop share. Let me. Um, I'm reading it off of my off of my network network drive here. Let me pull it up and just save it on the computer. See if it quits. I don't know if it's got anything to do with a network connection on it. It may have. Let me go there. Close that. And let me pull it back up and save it on, on this computer.
actually. No, I didn't need that. I needed the. Oh, no, I already had that. That was not the one. Okay, you should you should see it again. Okay, everybody see it again? Yeah. Okay, looks like it's gonna be cutting out again. That's kind of strange here. If it I'll just have to just just while we're doing this, I'll have to keep that mouse kind of moving there. But the the three basic measurements that you'll do in the electrical field would be for voltage, current, and resistance. The voltage by definition, the most simplest way to look at it, to define it would be electrical pressure. And more specifically, when you measure voltage, the meter is actually telling you the difference in electrical pressure between two points. And the two points would be the red probe and then the common, the black probe there. So when you touch two points in a circuit, the meter, whatever shows up on the display, is actually the difference in pressure between the red and the black probes, the difference. Okay, everybody got that? And we compare it to, to pressure that can be pressure in a, in a tire or water pressure in, in, in fluid power. Then, and, and to measure, measure voltage, of course, you know we're using the probes. Now, for current, current, is by definition the simplest way to view it would be its flow rate it's the flow rate of the electrical charge per second like saying how fast is the water flowing through a line in gallons per minute the flow rate of electrical charge can be uh we call that current like current in a river you know the river has a current to it and the faster the water flows then the higher the flow rate would be gallon per minute in a river and that's the same thing as current in an electrical circuit. And in a, and when, you, when you're reading current, we, we measure in a unit called amps or amperes. Okay, and to measure amps, um, we the meter that you used, we're using this fork right here. You actually place the conductor down in the fork here and, and it, picks up, it picks up the amps by way of sensing a magnetic field whenever you put the wire, you know, in, in, the, uh, in the fork. Or it can be one of these current clamps like this. If I cut this off, go back to here. Now, do you see my screen large? Yeah. yeah so the current, current can be measured. These, these newer, these newer um, current meters and meters they got an open fork on them. And you'd have to get the, the wire down, down in this area where the lines are in the sensing range to get an accurate reading. If your wire's up in here, it's not going to be a guaranteed accurate reading. But on these type, it has an open jaw. So you put, you know, you put the wire inside the jaw and it doesn't matter where it is in there, it's more forgiving there. Even though it's got lines in there, that's the, uh, what you'll find is it's more forgiving than, 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 a, than an open fork is. So, Either one can measure amps. Current, we measure current, and the unit is amps or, or amperes. Okay. So we do. We measure in most cases. We measure current. We measure in a non-contact way that we don't. In in most cases. In most cases, we do not use probes. We don't use a direct contact method to check amps in most cases, even though. The book is going to show you um, uh, so, some cases to where you would, to where you could. Um, but you have to have a meter that has amp, uh, amp jack to be able to measure amps by direct contact. Okay? And we're going to cover that in just a minute. And somebody just, just sent me a message. Who was that? Right, he's not in that class, right? Okay, that's fine. All right, sorry about that. Let's go back to here.
with my mouse. He's wanting to do some funky stuff here. Let's see if I can do run just a regular mouse pad. Now, do you see the blue screen again? Yes. Okay. Now, so um, when we look at, at, at Ohm's law formulas, current, it, it, it's amps or amperes, and we can use an A for the abbreviation or a little m and a big A for milliamps. That's a fraction of an amp. I can be used, you're going to find out I is used today in the formulas. And the I is used to represent the intensity. The intensity of the current flow um, is another is another way that they that they are, uh, you know, express it in, is in intensity. Or when we say flow rate or intensity, it's the same thing. You know, the flow rate, the faster the flow rate, the more intense it is. So that's how those two are essentially the same. Whatever meter that you're using, you know, you want to have the setting. If you're reading amps, let's cut this here off. And my mouse is, there you go. When you're reading amps, you know, you're gonna to go to the appropriate setting on here. That's gonna be for volts. Y'all see that on the webcam good? Yeah. Yeah. And this particular meeting meter can sense AC or DC volts on that selection. And it's gonna tell you on the display it's going to tell you what what it what it knows is there. Okay, for volts. Now, this one it ha actually has two settings. It has a, a it has a, a AC voltage setting with the wave on it, and then the DC voltage setting there. So you really got to be you got to think more using this meter. You know, it tells you on on the screen it says DC because you selected DC. So if you're on the DC setting there and you actually go to an AC circuit and check it, the meter's not going to tell you that what you've done. It's not going to tell you. It's not going to correct that, that display. You're simply not going to read the voltage. And you, you may think that it's dead if you check a receptacle, a 120 receptacle, but you've got the meter on DC volts. It's not going to read. And, and you may have, make a mistake and think that the circuit's dead when it's not. Um, so if you're not sure what the voltage is in a circuit, the safest thing to do is check it on both settings on this meter. You know, go to AC setting right there, and you see it says AC on the screen, and then test it. And if it says zero, then go on up to the DC setting, and you see it says it there, and you check the same circuit and see does it say zero. So if you're just not sure if it's AC or DC, check it on both on a meter like this, you know, before you proceed putting your hands on that circuit. Okay. Resistance is the third basic measurement that we do. And resistance itself, resistance itself, by definition, would be a property of, of a circuit, either the conductors or devices or connections, that tends to oppose current flow, that, may, that slows it down somewhat, that doesn't stop it, but hint that slows it down, opposes it to, to a certain amount that actually slows the current down. And um, everything, everything that we use, um, like light bulbs, you know, light bulbs, they have resistance in them, a certain amount in them. And when it goes through the process of converting electricity to light, that resistance, you know, it, you know is, is, it, is in there um, that has to do with that. Um, here, a heater element that we use to heat up hot water at your house, the heater element, it has a certain amount of resistance in it that's a controlled amount that, when the electricity goes through it, the, it uh, the, the resistance develops heat, and then you get hot water, or you have heater elements on your stove, in your clothes dryer. Um, you know, we have heater elements everywhere, your hair dryer, um, you name it. You just, all around your home, you got heater elements. You might not have thought about it, but um, your if you have a crock pot or a you know, a George Foreman grill, they all have heater elements in them. They all have a certain amount of resistance. And we're going to get in today at looking at the relationship between the resistance and how, how much current goes through that, through that device. 
Um, we measure resistance in ohms, and that's the last name of George Simon Ohm. He was a German physicist that actually came up with the formula that we're going to use today called Ohm's Law, that he, he uh, discovered the way to um, define these properties, these measurements that we do in circuits. And we use the horseshoe symbol, and it's, it's a Greek symbol that's called omega. We use the omega symbol for ohms. Um, when we write numbers out, like 10 ohms, we write 10 in the horseshoe. But in formulas like today, in formulas, we use just the letter R for resistance, not the horseshoe. So you'll find that out in, in the Ohm's Law uh, formulas that it's, it's simply the letter R. Resistance can be compared in, in fluid power circuits by taking a, a, a water spigot and that you take your spigot at home and you open it all the way up and you've got very little resistance and you get you get a fast flow rate. If you take the water spigot and you and you valve it halfway shut, it's still flowing water, but you're flowing half as much, right? So it slows it down when 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 the valve introduces some resistance into that water line. Well that's what happens when when light bulbs and heater elements and things like that are introduced into a circuit. They slow the current down some, and but in, in a case of a light bulb or heater element, it's slowing it down to a point, and it's using that, that electric current to give us either heat or light or with a motor to get motion. So that's the main uh, task that, we, that we're going to get out of electricity is, is are those, are those three things. Um, to be light, heat, and motion. Okay, does that does that make good? Is that nice and clear to everybody? The way of looking at that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And when we when we look at at the setting on on a meter for checking resistance, you know, we're going to go to the horseshoe symbol, the ohms. You know, right there. And one thing to keep in mind about meters is they all have limits, limitations on every. No matter what measurement that you're dealing with, they all have a top limit that, they, that when they get there, they can't read no higher than that. So what, what do you see beside the horseshoe symbol on this meter? What does it say under it? 1K. 1K ohm. Now, does anybody know what K means? Kilo ohms. Kilo ohms. Did, did I give y'all a metric reading sheet? Did I give y'all one of those sheets? Yes, sir. I did. Okay, great. Yep. So K means a thousand of anything. A kilo ohm is a thousand ohms. A kilovolt is a thousand volts, and a kilogram is a thousand grams. Right. So it's a prefix that you put in front of any type of a unit, and it means a thousand of it. And we use it so that we don't have to put so many zeros in a number. You know, we don't have to write one thousand ohms. We can say one K ohm. It's metric, it's accepted worldwide. That's what everybody in the world is using for electrical prefixes is the metric system, okay? Yes, sir. And then when, when we're measuring ohms, then we're gonna use the probes, okay? So we use the probes to check voltage. We use the probes to check ohms. And by the way, when you're checking ohms, make sure that you never put the probes on a circuit that's powered up. Because if you if you, if you put if you put it on ohms and touch a live circuit, you, you can damage the meter. You can damage the circuit. You can actually have it blow up in your face. It can be it can be fatal. Um, so, and, and what happens here is this. Here, here's why that is. When you when you put the meter on ohms, here's what it does. It uses the battery voltage inside of here. There's two AA batteries in there. It uses the battery voltage in there as a power source to send out of the red probe and through some device like a switch or a fuse that you're gonna test, it sends some of that battery voltage out through something and back on this probe, it, try, it sends current out through a particular thing and it comes back here and then it calculates the resistance. Well, the battery voltage that's actually out here, if you take that battery voltage and you come in contact with a receptacle, when you're sitting on ohms here, then what you've done is you put battery voltage in here, head to head with, with AC voltage, and it's gonna it's gonna collide. Okay, it's not gonna be good. You're just gonna go pow. Um, I've actually seen it 
blow, blow out a hunk of the of, of the probe here. I've actually seen it actually arc so bad that it actually blasted a part of the metal off of off of the probe, and I had to replace the probe before. So, so that it, it can be it can be that at a minimum, you know, and, and it can be worse. It can it can, yep. it can you can get hurt off of that. So, when you're making selections with a meter, go nice and slow. Now we use the ohm meter. You know the ohm meter can be used to do to do very basic things like checking, like like checking continuity through a switch. So let's let's just show you a basic a basic use of doing that. That's not a single pole switch. That's a three-way. I don't have a single pole in here. But if you were just going to do a basic, a basic test, a continuity test with a meter, you know, then you, when the, when the probes are apart, it, it should say OL, which means over limit, and it means it is over the limit right now. It's over the limit of that one K ohm. So OL means over limit. Oh, it means it is over one K ohm. It doesn't mean that it's really an open circuit necessarily because this meter would not recognize anything above a thousand ohm. If I measure something two thousand ohms, it would still stay OL. Now, if I just do a continuity check on, on, on part of the switch here, you know, and I go from here to here, I don't have a connection, but when I flip the switch, then you see I have a reading right there of one ohm. I've got a reading of one ohm. And then when I cut the switch off for two ohms there, and then I have an OL. Now, now you can test you can test a switch when it's out of the circuit, when it's not hooked up to power, with an ohm meter, and that's fine. But if this switch is wired up and got power on it, you, you never you, you you're, if it's got power, you're not going to use the ohm the ohm function. You know you're going to go to voltage like you have done already in your labs. But coming up on your next lab, you're going to be using the resistance function. And you got to make sure that, that the circuit's locked out. Okay. And we're also going to use the meter to check resistance of bulbs and things like that coming up. You're getting ready to get into quite a bit of that. Okay. We'll go to our um, chapter here. And, um, and thank y'all for joining, by the way, for those of you who just came in. I see Victor's in. Yeah, I've been watching for a little while now. Good, good. Good. Glad you made it, man. Yeah, me too. And let's see. Learn, Mr. Edward. Do what now? I'm going to learn something today. You learned something today. I said I'm trying to learn something today. Great, great, great. You will. You will. McGill's in. Hey, McGill, how you doing, man? What's going on, Derwood? Good. Glad you made it. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Been here in a little while. Okay, great. Okay, we'll go back. And I'm ready to learn. Great. You, yeah, you're getting ready to, yeah. We're going to get in about ankle deep now. <laughs> okay, do y'all see the the uh the PowerPoint there? Yes, sir. Yeah. So we're going we're going to get into electron theory and Ohm's law. Now they start out very very basic, saying that matter is anything that occupies space and has weight, which can be a liquid, a gases, and a solid. And these things are made up of smaller units called atoms. Um, atoms, that's just a, a, a uh, that's a, a layout of an atom. It has a nucleus, and the nucleus has protons and neutrons. The protons are positive charged. The neutrons are electrically neutral. They don't have a charge. 
and then electrons revolve around the nucleus like planets revolve around the sun. You know, all the planets in, in the solar system revolve around the sun. The sun sits still, and then all of the planets revolve around the sun. So electrons is like all the planets that revolve around that nucleus. That's kind of an analogy there. Um, the electrical charge. Charged materials attract or repel each other. An electrical charge can be positive or negative. And if you have two things that are charged the same, they're going to repel each other. So two positive charges are going to repel and then opposite charges will attack, will, will attract. Um, has everybody, has everybody at some point uh, ever seen magnets, seen magnets stick together? Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. Played with magnets when you were when you were young, and you know if you, a magnet does have a north pole and it has a south pole. So if you take two magnets and put the north pole together, they're just going to push against each other. But if you flip one of them around and you let a north and a south get together, what's going to happen? Attract. They'll attract and they'll draw. They'll draw in so that they attract each other. Okay, we all know that from from um, playing with magnets. Okay, we've already said that. Electrons, they, re they revolve around the nucleus and uh, they possess a negative charge. And um, they're lighter in weight than protons. And all electrons are alike regardless of the atom that they're in. And an atom contains the same number of electrons as protons. Now here we're looking at current. You know, we've already talked about current that we measure in amps. Current um, is in, in their terms, electrons in motion along a conductor. And you can, you know, when you get real specific about it, it's actually flow rate of the electrons. But when they say they're in motion, electrons that are moving, you know, like a river that's moving, you know. And electrons, they revolve around each copper atom when you're dealing with copper wire. And when, when voltage is applied, like at the power plant, that where they generate electricity at, then electrons are forced to pass through the conductor, through the power lines, through your wiring, you know, in a, in a, in a building, and in your machinery. So the electrons are forced to pass along the length of the wire as, as it's pushed by progress energy, by Duke, by Duke, you know, as, as it pushes through um, by voltage. Voltage is, is the pressure that pushes. And current is measured in amperes by an ammeter. So let me say this. Now, this meter is actually a multimeter. A multimeter can do volts, amps, ohms, multimeter. Now, there are meters that all, they're gonna, that all they'll do will be amps. They do make them that are just dedicated meters. And if it's a dedicated meter, you call it an ammeter. Um, some meters are... Most meters nowadays are going to be digital, and you can see some. We have some older ones in the shop that are actually a needle type that are analog. We got some analog meters down there that are just dedicated AM meters. Um, so when you're asked a question in your, in your worksheet, the worksheet for this chapter is going to ask you, what instrument do you use to measure current? And your answer is going to be an AM meter, even though a multimeter will do it. Um, and we use the letter I in a circuit. In, 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 in the Ohm's Law formula, I represents current. Now, there are three kinds of current that we deal with in electricity. Three basic forms. Now, there is other waveforms than this, but we start out with three wave three waveforms. Electricity, when it's generated, when we receive it, here at the school, at your house, at your plant, when we receive it, it comes in a form of AC, which is over here. Do you see my mouse moving around? Yeah. Yep. Now, AC is generated at Duke Energy. The generator that turns, well, they start out with some mechanical source that can turn, that can turn a generator, right? It can be nuclear. It can be steam. 
it can be hydro. If you're at Niagara Falls, they've got a hydroelectric generator that the waterfall is turning, you know, a turbine, and then it's it's turning. Uh, you have you always start out with some natural form of energy that that will turn a generator, right? So it starts out something has to mechanically drive a generator, and then the generator produces the electricity. So that's how you know you got to have some kind of energy to convert into electricity. The generator at the power plants, the output of the generator looks like this. It starts out at zero volts and it goes up in a smooth direction and it goes in a, in a smooth pattern. Do you see my mouse moving around following that, that pattern there? Yeah. It goes up to a peak and then it goes down to zero. So that, that first peak is a positive peak, positive voltage. Then when it swings down to zero, then it goes into a negative half cycle it reaches a negative peak down there, and then it starts going back up towards zero again. Now from the first zero point to the second, to the third zero point there, that's considered to be one cycle, one cycle. Now, Duke Energy and all, all, you, all, you, all of your uh, power plants in the US, they run at a speed of 60 cycles per second. So you actually get 60 complete cycles when you go from that starting point to that ending point of that one cycle, it actually does 60 of those sine waves every second. So that's the speed that they're running at. And by the way, that pattern there, that nice smooth wave pattern there that goes positive and negative back to zero again, that waveform is called a sine wave, S-I-N-E. Um, in trigonometry, you've got terms like sine, cosine, tangent, and all that. Now, sine is, it's a term, it's a math term, okay? And so that's where it comes from. So it's not like S-I-G-N, it's not sine like a wall sign, but it's S-I-N-E, like a math function, okay? Now, we start out, we receive it from the power company in that form. Now I'm gonna show you here, I've got an oscilloscope in this, in my office in here. And I want you to look and see what it looks like coming in here to my office when you when you see it on a, on a scope meter. And when you're here on campus Tuesday, I can get the scope meter out and let you use it and let you probe your circuit with a scope meter and see what the waveform looks like of what, you're, of what you have on, on, on your lab, okay? So let's switch over to the webcam and, uh, So let me get the camera settled down here. That's kind of um, hazy looking. Let me actually darken. Let me darken that screen on that scope so you can actually see it better. Give me a second to get the uh, um, the contrast on there. There's a way of doing that. Hold on. Contrast. Give me a second to get to get to get the screen darker here. Okay, it's still hazy looking. Give me a second. I didn't realize it was going to be that hazy looking. Hold on.
Hold on. It's, it, it's Hazy working on the screen, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I kind okay. of. Hold on. Let me, let me try to get something set here. I didn't realize we were going to have that issue. Hold on just a minute. Okay, it's not adjusting. I, I know there's a way of doing it. Just a second here. I'm actually on the contrast button here. But I'm not seeing, it's not changing contrast. Hold on, there's there's a way of doing it. I just got to get. Hold on, I apologize for this. It's, give me a minute. I, it's, uh, it's not responding to the change that I'm doing here. Just give me a second here, please. When I hit contrast, it's supposed to let me go up and down. To get darker or lighter, I've done this before. Let me reboot it. Something, something's up here with this thing. Let me reboot the scope here. I don't know why, why it's not responding. Why it's not letting me change the, uh, the brightness of the screen. I've done it before. Yeah, I mean, for some reason it's not cooperating. Let me let me let me cut the lights off in the room and see if that'll help. And then cut the back the back screen off. It's still washed out, isn't it? Okay, that's not the issue there. That's the first time it's, it's not cooperating. That's got the cause of why it's doing that. Um,
Now, when I change the angle, it actually takes the glare off of it. And if I cut, now you can actually make that out, can't you? Yeah. When I change the angle of the camera, then you can actually make it out. Now let me let me do one more thing here. This is I, I'm a, this is unusual why I'm having to do this, but you do what you got to do, you know. Now, so y'all see y'all see the sound wave on the screen now. Yeah. And what does it say? There, there's two displays. If you look up top, there's the, the, this display says what. Can you read the number up there? Uh, and it hurts. What does it say? 119.5 uh, volts with a wave, which means AC, and then RMS. RMS is root mean square. That's another math term, and that's, that's the, the mathematical way it calculates what the average voltage is, not the peak voltage, but the average voltage. Now, Right here where I'm drawn, you see my mouse moving there on the screen? Do y'all see my mouse moving I don't. around? Huh? I don't. No. You don't see my mouse moving? No. No. Okay. Let, let me point let me point with my pen then. You see my pen? Yeah. Now, right here, right here where the where that dashed line is, that's a zero point that goes through the sine wave. So this is zero where my pen is, right in the middle. Okay. That's your reference point. And one, one sine wave would be starting here, it would go up to a positive peak, goes to zero, goes negative, back up to zero. That's one cycle. Now, the, what does it say in the second, in the second display down there? What does it say down in there? 59 hertz. 59.99 and, and, and it's bouncing to 60 hertz. Now HZ means hertz. And hertz is the unit that we use to measure frequency. Now frequency is this. It tells you how frequently does the signal change? How frequently does it cycle? The speed of the actual changing of the signal. I mean, how many cycles do we get in a second? Per second is really the way we read it. So this, what you're seeing right now is, is actually what's coming in. <clears throat> if you see over here where I'm probing that in a power strip, I'm probing it right in a power strip right there in my office. Those are, those are the two test leads going right into a hot and a neutral receptacle. Y'all see that? Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm reading right now in my office. And that's what you see on that screen there. Is This is the way it comes in from Duke Energy. And that's a pure sound wave, a very clean, pure sound wave. Can y'all see that pretty good? Yes. Okay, now, um, that is the way that we start out getting power from them. It comes in as a pure sound wave. And then in all of your devices, like computers, televisions, everything that you use, most things that you use is gonna convert the AC over to DC inside, inside the device, like your television, your computer, all of those things, none of those things run, none of them run on AC on the inside. They all run on DC on the inside. And so we take this AC, once it gets to your television or to your whatever it is, once it gets inside that device, it goes through a circuit that converts it from AC. And then the second step that happens inside your television, it converts it to a pulsating DC. So let's take a look in the book at, at what happens after, after we have the AC and it gets inside of something. Now, do you see the PowerPoint again? <clears throat> yes. yes, sir. So we, if we start out getting it like this from Duke Energy, 
And then when it gets into any kind of device that you have, computer, TV, whatever you got, then your device converts it from this over to this. All, all the good devices like that have a circuit in them that's a, a, a bridge rectifier, and I'm going to show you what that device looks like, that converts AC over to pulsating DC. So it, look carefully and listen real good here. Here's what happens in the first step in converting to DC. Is it takes the negative, the negative half cycle of the AC coming in, that negative half cycle, you're getting 60 of them a second. It flips the negative, the negative one up positive. And look, you see the negative one right here. You see my mouse moving there? Uh-huh. It takes the negative one and it actually inverts it up. And here it is right here. So it, it was going down here but it flipped it and now it's a positive peak. So now you have all of, the, all of the pulses are positive and there are no negative swings in the signal now. That, that's the second step in getting from AC over to a straight DC that doesn't vary. So when you get to this point, it's called pulsating direct current or pulsating DC. And you call it DC because it doesn't go below zero. It doesn't go negative. All the pulses are positive. Even though it, it varies in intensity, it, it's always positive in, in a positive direction. It's always above zero. It's not negative. It doesn't ever go negative. And so that form right there is a second form. And I'm going to show you a little circuit of, of, what, of, what's, of what's inside your computer, inside your TV. I'm gonna show you how that's done inside of all your devices, how it gets from this to this. The third step that happens in, in, the next step that happens inside of all of your equipment would be, it takes these pulses right here and then it, see, it feeds the pulses to something called a capacitor. And the capacitor charges up kind of like a battery does but it charges up to the, to the top peak of, of these pulses here. So whatever voltage it is up on the peaks here, at the highest point, the capacitor charges up, and then it actually ends up being straight line voltage there, this rock solid straight line, and there's no, there's no pulses in it anymore. And then it's called direct current or DC. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. That's that those that's those are the steps in converting AC to pulsating DC to straight DC. Now let's get the oscilloscope and I'm gonna show you um an example of how that's measured. So down here on this board. I have a little power supply that converts AC coming in and it goes through a device called a bridge rectifier. Now bridge rectifier is this thing right here. Do y'all see the terminals? There's four legs on it. Uh huh. The middle two yes, legs sir. says AC. You see that? It says AC in the middle. So if you feed AC into, into the center two legs on that four-legged device there, you put AC on the center two, then it converts it over to pulsating DC, and you leave on the positive on the left side and the negative on the right side, and the two outside legs give you the pulsating DC that you see in the book. I'm going to show you what it looks like feeding into this thing in the center two and then what it looks like leaving there, okay? And to show you what's going on on the inside of this thing, the, the bridge rectifier that I have here, I'm moving the camera here. So just bear with me here a minute. This is the actual device I have in my hand that, that does that. Okay. 
that's the bridge rectifier. That's a picture, a data sheet for it that you put AC on the center two leads and you get pulse heat and DC leaving it. Now inside inside of that inside of that device there, you have actually four devices called diodes in there. One of these things is called a diode. And what a diode does is it actually functions like a check valve. How many, who can tell me what a check valve is in, in, in a water line? It only goes one way. Right. So this these diodes in here, and there are four of them in there. Now let me just show you what one one diode looks like by itself. Now, one diode looks like this. It has a gray band. You see that gray band on there? Yes, sir. Adjust that. This is a diode here. And the gray band is the negative end or the cathode. And then the, the, the unmarked end is, is the anode or the positive end. And so here, here, here's what this thing does. This diode will let current go in one direction. It lets it go from left to right. And it, it doesn't let it go backwards. So it blocks it. It's like a check valve that when the current goes from left to right, it opens like a flapper check in, 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 a, in a check valve. It lets water go this way, but when it tries to go back, it slams shut and it doesn't let anything run back that way, okay? So there are, there are four of these inside of that. Four diodes inside a bridge rectifier. So let's get back to the data sheet. Now, this is not an electronics class, but my background is electronics, and that's why I can show you this stuff. Um, this is the stuff I studied out here back in, in the 80s, and my, my degree is in this stuff. Um, so inside, inside, you know, the, the bridge rectifier has four legs to it, and the two AC legs are the top and bottom. Um, and so, do what now? Oh, I'm sorry. I was talking over here. Okay. But... The top and bottom legs is where you feed the AC in on the schematic symbol, but it's really the two middle legs. Everybody see that good? Uh -huh. And then the left leg coming out here is positive DC, and this is, this is the, the negative here. So if you measure with a meter or a scope here, you're going to get those positive pulses, two positive pulses out of there to where the AC comes in. What leaves out of here would be positive humps with no negative hump, okay? And what it does is these diodes, what they do in a nutshell is they redirect the current so that, you know, let me draw this on here. Here's what happens in a nutshell, very simply put is the negative half cycle there that comes in, is it actually reroutes it to be, it reroutes it to be positive. All it, it doesn't get rid of it, but the negative half cycle, by the way the diodes are configured, it ends up doing a rerouting of the current so that when, when, when the incoming current is trying to go negative, let me draw some dots in here. where I got some dashed lines right there, what used to be a negative half cycle coming in from the power company feeding in, it gets rerouted in a positive direction. That's, that's the way the diodes function. And that, that's, you end up getting that when you measure right out here. So let's just show you what happens when I read this on this little test board, you're gonna see this leaving the bridge, okay? And again, this is not an electronics class, but, but it's, it's something that you do need to see how, how do we convert AC to DC? And, um, you know, then you'll, you'll appreciate, you know, what, what the book is trying to say here. So um, I'm going to measure, well, first of all, I'm going to set my voltage up that comes, that comes into this little circuit here. I'm going to set it. using something called a, a, a function generator. This is a, a frequency generator here that'll let me generate a, a low voltage signal at 60 hertz. It's gonna be at 60 hertz there coming out of this thing. 
I'm going to feed a low voltage signal into that little circuit down there because normally you're not going to feed 120 volts straight into that bridge rectifier. You have to reduce it down with a transformer and get it into a low voltage AC before you feed it into that bridge rectifier down on that board. So I'm going to reduce it down to about 9, 10 volts coming out of this thing that that rectifier can handle. Okay, so what you're going to see on the screen there is this. I'm going to take the probes out of the, out of the receptacle. We're not going to be we're not going to be dealing with the, with the AC there no more. I'm coming out of out of this frequency generator here, out of that cable, and I'm feeding into to some jumper clips that are down here. These jumper clips feed in to this bridge rectifier through the, through, through these wires right here. So I've got a positive and I've got a negative here, and I've got both both of those feeding into the into the center tabs right down there. So if you see here, I have these two that positive feeding into here, and I've got that negative feeding in that white wire over here. So we're going into those to the center two legs on that rectifier in those little holes there. I've got got it feeding into there, and then the outside legs, the outside legs is what we're going to measure what's leaving there. We'll start out by measuring the incoming AC. It's going to be a low voltage AC coming in. And that's what you're going to see next whenever we, on, on the scope screen. Okay, so uh, let's see, let me get myself ready here. I'm going to probe the incoming voltage. And I'm going to turn that up. Just go to auto. Now, do you see the wave? You see the wave going up and down? You see it going up and going down? Yes. What I'm doing is I'm Sir. changing, I'm changing the output voltage of that of that frequency generator. And I'm making the voltage go up and down. So if, if you know, when I go down, you see it get shorter, right? If I go up, you see it get taller. Yes. yes. So that's what you can see on the scope, you can actually see it get taller. And so you see it get really big and then it rescales itself. Each time it gets out of the range of the screen, it changes it changes how many volts per division in, 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 in a parameter on the screen. And if I can get it where you can see that. Let Down here it says it says five volts per division. You see that five V slash D? Yes. Five volts per division. Yes, and then the voltage is actually 7.84 volts RMS at 59 hertz. Okay. I can fine tune the frequency a little bit and get it exactly at 60. So I, I'm sitting at exactly at 60 hertz, and it's, it's, it's almost 8 volts, okay? The little generator I have here is it, low voltage, you know, and so you are getting a sound wave. You're getting 60 hertz, but you're getting it at low voltage, but you're getting the same. You're seeing it looks just like it is coming in. This low voltage is what you've got to have feeding into a bridge rectifier, and you get it low by going through a transformer. On your boards in the shop, You'll notice on those plywood boards, there, there's a large, heavy transformer at the bottom of those boards that we use in another class for motor controls. Have y'all noticed those transformers? 
on your plywood boards here at school. Yeah. The transformer would take the 120 coming in and step it down to something lower that the, that the bridge rectifier can accept. But this is the AC right here. This is what's coming into the bridge rectifier. And if you look carefully here, let's make a point that this this dot this dash is a zero line in the center in the center of that sine wave. You see that? That's a zero line. Uh -huh. Now, now I'm going to change where my probes are and show you what it looks like leaving the bridge rectifier. So I'm, I'm moving the leads now. And now you see, you see that? Yes. Now you have positive pulses and there's no negative pulses. You see it? And now let's go back to the source coming in. This is what comes into the bridge rectifier. It's, it's AC, positive and negative pulses. And here's what leaves the bridge rectifier, right there. You see that? Uh-huh. Yes, sir. If you a webcam back that you can see what I'm doing, I want you to see, see where I'm probing at it, if, if I can manage for you to see everything. And it's going to be difficult that camp for that camera to really get a view of of the screen and and me actually doing it. Um, but I'll try that. Let me see if I can manage. Um, no, when I point down there, you're not seeing the screen. Mm -hmm. So, but I go back this way. I might be able to do do something like this. This. This whole online thing is is, is, is a challenge. Um, when I come down here to, to the to the rectifier, and I know you're not going to be able to see up close, but let me just show you the, uh, the up, up close measurement I'm doing down here when I go to it. I'm going to the outside legs on this thing. Let's get, hold on, let's go. Now you can see the legs, right? I'm going to the outside legs here with my meter probe. You see what I'm doing? Yeah. When I go to the outside legs like that, I put the, the red on the positive lead and I put the black on the negative lead. I'm going straight to the legs on the output legs on that rectifier. And it's giving me those positive pulses. When I check the incoming, I go to the center legs here, like that. You see it? So I'm checking the incoming going there, and I'm checking the outgoing on the outside legs by moving those probes to those small, those small leads there, right there. Everybody sees that, right? Now, yes. Go back to the screen, and here, here goes here goes your readings. Here goes your your view again. The incoming is here, and then the outgoing is here, where I just showed you where I moved my probes to. Everybody see that? And then the next step is this. The next step, we do this. We leave, we leave the bridge rectifier, and we introduce a capacitor. A capacitor, that thing looks like a metal can, and that's what it is. It's got two legs. It's got a negative and it's got a positive lead. The negative's marked over here. The positive is the other one. If I leave, if I leave the positive lead on that bridge rectifier and I connect the capacitor in there, what's going to happen is, is the capacitor is going to charge up to the highest points on those pulses. And you'll no longer see pulses, but it'll be a straight line DC, rock solid with no, with no pulses, no variation, just by adding this in there. Okay. So let's do this. Let's put, let's clip a lead onto the output of the rectifier. I'm going to introduce this and then pull it out and put it in and pull it out, let you see what happens when I, br when I bring it in and out with that capacitor. So I'm going to put a different lead on here. I'm going to pull the probe off. And I'm going to put a, a clip. The, the, the oscilloscope ha has these little uh, leads here. I can put a little hook up like that and it'll grab. 
So I'm going to go to the down here, and I'm going to clip onto that lead right there with this little grabber. So y'all see what I did there? I clipped on a, a the, the probe leave, leaving the bridge rectifier, and I got it leaving on there. Where I, I can hold my other lead with my hand. So I've got I've got the red probe attached permanently to the output of the rectifier. And then my other lead, I'm going to hold it by hand and I'm going to plug the capacitor in and out. So watch the screen. Watch the waveform and watch the numbers. And let me change it so it'll actually read the DC and the AC at the same time. If I change the, the, the functions on the meter, I can go in there and change what it's going to display and let it read AC and DC. It has a menu in there and I can let it show me AC in one setting and DC in the other one. And um, hit enter. And now it's actually going to give me an AC setting up in here and then a DC voltage in here. Whichever one, it's going to read both. It's like it's going to tell me two things at one time. All right, so. Let's get up there where you can see. So do you see the, the, pop, do you see the positive pop, the, the, the pulsating DC there? Yes. Now I'm going to plug the capacitor in, and then what's going to happen then? You know, look look carefully. Is it the actual point up in here is where the DC is going to be a straight line right there when I plug the capacitor in. So get ready to plug it in right now. You ready? Here it goes right now. You see that? Yeah. And I, now I unplug the capacitor and look. And there it goes. It's right back to pulsating DC. I plug it in again, and it goes right back up to a straight line of, of um, 10.24 volts DC. Up in here, it says DC, and then the AC setting is down in here. You see that? So uh -huh. the, larger screen, the larger screen is giving me volts DC, and then the bottom one's giving me an AC. There's no AC there now at all, zero. So the, the AC value went down to nothing. And, 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 and now watch it, watch it change again. I'm going to pull the capacitor out. And there it went. And now you've actually, it's actually reading some AC and some DC in there because you've got a mix, okay? It, it's getting, it's not really true AC, it's pulsating DC. But basically you see the waveform there that everything is above zero. You see that dash line? This is zero right here. You see that? That's the zero uh -huh. line. And you have all positive pulses there. And then when I when I when I very simply go in there and plug the capacitor in, all I'm doing is this. I'm going in there where the capacitor is. And I'm adding it to the circuit like that with that jumper lead. That little orange lead, I, I'm putting it in there like that, or I'm removing it. So when, when you see the screen change, I've got the capacitor in the circuit there, and then I, and then I and then I don't. Everybody follow? Yes, sir. So with yes, it plugged sir. in, with it plugged in. With the capacitor, you have straight DC. There's no variations in the waveform. And then with, without the capacitor, you're right back to that. Okay? And, and that's, that's enough said about that. That just shows you graphically how it looks. And that little, these, these couple little devices here, look, that little bridge rectifier that's in there, that four-legged device there, this one package here, and then that capacitor is all it takes to give you DC. But then if you want to regulate it, you do have to regulate it at a particular voltage. 
you can regulate it with different regulators. I have some regulators here. This one here with, with a part number of a five on the end of it is a five volt regulator. So it's a three legged device. If I plug that in there, it's going to regulate the output down to five volts. DC, rock solid. This one that has a, a 12 at the end of the number is a 12 volt regulator. So if, if I if I have enough if I have enough DC feeding out of there, if I have a little higher AC and I can get some higher DC out of that out of the rectifier to the capacitor, then I could regulate down to 12 volts with this one. It's got a 12 at the end of the part number, 7812. So if this could give you a rock solid 12 volts, but you got to feed something in there higher than 12 for it to regulate down to 12. <coughs> this one is a 24 volt regulator. So Victor and McGill on, on your, your 24 volt power supplies at, at your plant, they're using something like that on the inside that you have to feed something in, into this higher than 24 for it to regulate down to 24. So, you know, you could feed, you know, 35, 36 volts or so into this thing, and it's gonna bring it right down to a rock solid 24 volts. Now, those, these are devices that, that are on the inside of your computer, your um, television, and anything you go out and buy electronic wise has these things in there that, that actually does the process that we're talking about of going from AC to DC. Everything has that. Now, um, this little generator over here can actually change and go at other frequencies other than 60 hertz. I'm just show you quickly what happens if, if a signal is not 60 hertz. If you, you know, if, if you have equipment like running at your plant, Victor and uh, McGill, other than 60 hertz, let's just show you what, what it looks like if you change that. <laughs> Um, let's, let me do a little switcheroo here and get something out of the circuit here. Let's see if I can get that out of the picture. Get that out of the picture. Now look, look at the screen carefully here. Um, And let's go back to the display to where it'll actually read Hertz. I'm gonna change that it's gonna show you the Hertz readings. And now it is showing the frequency up here. Do you see where it says 60 Hertz? Yes. Now watch what happens when I change the frequency. I'm gonna go lower. And you'll see the wave actually stretch out. Do you see it stretch out and get wider? Hold on, let's go down. You see it stretching out while pulling the string? Let's go up, hold on, let's go up. If I go up in frequency, it actually looks like I'm actually compressing a spring. Do you see that moving? Yeah, yeah. You see it compressing? So what frequency am I at now? 97. 97 hertz. Now look, when I when I slow it down, you're going to see the the wave actually stretch like I'm pulling a like a spring. I'm going to stretch the spring and slow it down. Now watch carefully. You see it? You see that? Now now I don't have I don't have as many cycles per second. I've got 52 cycles per second now. And then if I speed it up, then I have more of them in a given, a given amount of time. You see that? It puts more of them on the screen. You see that? Uh -huh. Yes, sir. So that's what happens whenever you speed up, whenever you change the speed on a variable speed motor, it's actually changing the frequency going to it. And it makes the motor go faster or slower whenever you change like on a conveyor belt or something like that and change speeds. What you're doing is you're, with, with a variable speed drive, you're actually varying the speed, the frequency with, with a knob like that, you know. And that's how you make, that's how we make an AC motor go at different speeds. 
Everybody okay with that? Oh yeah. And then you know, then of course you can make look. You can make it be shorter. You know, you can go smaller, and then go bigger. You know, that's the amplitude. When you change the size of it up and down without changing the frequency, that's actually called the amplitude or, or how high how high is the voltage. You know, when it, I, I'm going to go low here, but it's getting shorter. See it? Y'all see it changing? You know, going up and down. Yes, sir. So I, I'm changing the amplitude, you know, and then you'll see the, the volts per division number change. It's at five volts per division right now. If I go down low, really low, it changes to two volts per division. You see that? Yeah. Because look, the signal got so small that it had to readjust the scaling on the screen automatically. It's in auto right now. This is an automatic scope here, scope meter. It's in auto and it changed to two volts per division right now. So each block is a division. So if you count the blocks out, it's going to be two volts per division. When you look at the average voltage, okay? But anyway, this gives you just a, a, a good graphic of what do we mean by frequency changing and, 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 then, and then the amplitude of it changing up and down when we change voltage, okay? Any, any questions about that? No, sir. Okay, good. Let's get on. Let's get right back on to um. You're welcome. You're welcome to use to use that scope. I can have it out for you Tuesday when you when you come back. You can use it anytime you want to in the shop to get familiar with this. It's not something that you use all the time, but it's a good thing to get familiar with it. So that whenever you do need it, you'll actually know how to set it up and use it. Um, now we're back. To, you see the PowerPoint again? Yes, sir. Now, moving yep. right along, uh, let's see here. Voltage means electrical pressure, and, and uh, you get generators that, that produce it, batteries produce it, photo, photoelectric cells produce it in, in solar fields. You get these um, solar, solar cells that, that actually take sunlight and they generate voltage out of that, and then it's DC coming off a of solar field, and then they actually invert it and go back to AC so it can be used. And then thermocouples are, are sensors that we use to detect how, how hot something is. So a thermocouple is a sensor you can place on something. You plug the thermocouple into a meter and then the meter can calculate how hot something is, like a thermometer. So basically when you take your temperature, it's, it's like, a, like a thermocouple that, 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 that's taking heat and then it's generating a little small little millivolt voltage on the ends of the wires and then a meter can tell you how what your temperature is you know we use the letter e in ohm's law for voltage when you measure voltage you connect the the, the meter in parallel with your load So, let's see. Right here. That's just a simple layout. When you're checking voltage, you know, you're doing, you're putting your meter across the load in parallel. That's called in parallel with the actual light bulb, like, like you've been here at school. So that's the proper position in there to, to check voltage, as you already know. and then electrical polarity. Polarity means if you have a device that has a positive, a definite positive and negative terminal that it matters, 
and it has polarity. Like, like batteries have a plus and a minus, so they are polarized. Electrons, when you're talking about electron flow, electrons flow from negative to positive. And a power source would maintain a supply of electrons on the negative terminal. Now, this book teaches that current flows from negative to positive. Some other books te teach conventional current flow that current goes from positive to negative. That doesn't make any difference in the numbers that you get on the meter. It doesn't affect that whatsoever. Um, but there are uh, some books that teach you that goes positive to negative. Other books teach you that goes the other way. Again, whichever way you look at it, it doesn't make any difference on uh, as far as the meter. The meter, the meter will still read the numbers the same way. But the meter will detect if it's a, if it's a battery. You hook the meter up backwards. The, the meter will tell you it if you got it hooked up backwards. It'll tell you if you hooked up on the wrong terminals. And if it's DC, the meter the meter will say negative on it. In other words, if I take a, a red probe and a black probe and go to a, go to a car battery, and I put red on the negative and I put the black lead on the positive, my meter will say a negative 12 volts. If I apply my test leads in reverse to a car battery, my meter will tell me I've got the meter hooked up backwards. It, it, it knows that. Uh, but it doesn't detect the, the direction of the current flow. Resistance, we've already talked about it. And here's Ohm's law. So basically, um, in Ohm's law, the E is voltage and the R is resistance, and then the I will be the current. So the current in any circuit can be calculated by taking the voltage and saying the voltage divided by the resistance, and it's going to equal the amps that's flowing through that particular device. So let's take a look at, at um, some examples here. Let's do, let's do some examples. Let's put up the Ohm's law. Um, uh, sheets. Did everybody get one of these the other day? Yes, sir. Everybody did. Now, the way, the best way to... Oh, I did. If, if you didn't, I can give you a paper copy of when you're here. And it should be on the, on the Moodle website for you to download electronically. It should be on there but I can give you a paper copy when you're here. Now, let's, let's take some examples of, this pie chart gives you all the formulas that you're gonna need in this class. And there's, you know, there's, there's, there's a number of them there. Each quarter of the pie would give you three ways to get one particular variable. And let's say for instance, for I, I means current. Do y'all see my mouse in there? Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Now, if you're calculating I for amps and you want to know what the amps would be in a circuit, there are three ways to come to it, to, 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 to get it. And the first formula would be E over R. E over R equals I. Okay? And that, let me do something that's, um, that can be a little more helpful here. Gonna move my, my webcam over here. Now y'all see my hand there? Yeah. yeah. I got my door open. I can't close my door with all this stuff in here. Now, the I current can be calculated with three different formulas. The first one is going to be E over R. And he, here's where it comes from when you put it in a simple triangle. Now, watch really closely here. On the triangle, look at here. I'm going to take I and cover it up with my thumb. So if I cover it up, that's the, the thing I'm calculating for. If I know what the voltage is and I know what the resistance is in a circuit, I cover up the unknown with my thumb and what's left? E over R. E, e over R. And look, this means division here. That means division. Now look, 
it's this is what it, it says e over r right there you see that yeah now let's take another formula out of the triangle let's say that maybe i knew what the voltage was and i knew what the current was but i don't know what the resistance is supposed to be so look i'm going to take my thumb and cover up r and what do i have left E over, I. e over I. So voltage divided by the current in the amps equals the resistance. Now watch, watch this. R is over here. You see the R? There's three ways to find R. This is the first one. E over I, okay? I cover up R and it's E over I. So here R is E over I. Now look, I'm going to circle that one or, or check it. We, we've seen this one, right? The first one we saw was we covered up I and it's E over R. Let's go up here. I is E over R. We check that one. So these two come out of the pie chart and they go into the triangle. Then let's say I know what the amp says and I know what the resistance is, but I don't know what the voltage is supposed to be. So I'm going to cover up E and what now what do I have left? I have I, I, beside, I beside R, and it means multiply. So if, if they're side by side, it's multiply. So E oh, E okay. E equals I times R. If the numbers are side by side, you have to multiply. The amps times the resistance gives you the, the volts. Now look, you see the E. Let's go to E. E E equals here I times R. See that? Uh huh. So. When you don't know what, if you're solving for E, you cover it up, and it's going to equal I times R, and there it is. E is I times R in, in the pie chart. Everybody see that? Uh -huh. That's your three basic ones. There are other ones in there that are involving P, wattage. P is, is in wattage or power consumption. That's going to be, it's coming up soon in this book, but not today. Let's do some examples using what we just did so you can do your worksheet over the weekend, okay? Now, so let's take um, let's take the worksheet. I'm gonna shoot it on the screen and I'm gonna let you tell me how to solve this, okay? So let, let's pull let's pull the worksheet up. I'm gonna switch screens here. And we're gonna get started on, on, on what I've got for you in Moodle already. Back to there, let's go out of there. Switch screens, let's go out of there. Just bear with me here a minute. Um, Okay, let's go um, a little bit bigger here. Here, let's go there. Now, can y'all see the screen? Do y'all see the worksheet up there? Somebody read that, number nine. A trouble light has a resistance of 12 ohms and is rated at half ampered. What voltage must be applied to obtain that rate current, the rated current? Now, so we're given, we're given 12 ohms and we're given a half an amp. Okay? And, and, and what, what are we, we're looking for voltage, right? We're looking for E. Yes, but sir. I'm going to cover up E and what does E equal? I, I times R. I times R. Now, so do, do, do the math there. If you go back. Six. Six, six what? Uh, six volts. Exactly. Six volts. Six volts. Correct. Let's see. You see what I did here? Here's what, here's what you can do. Y'all watch closely. 
I actually drew a triangle and I put the half amp in there and I put the 12 ohms in there and then I, I covered this up. So if you want to draw some triangles, you can do that on scratch paper and plug the numbers in there. And then wherever you're missing at, when you do the, when you do the math, it's going to give you the number. Okay. And then I want, here's what I want you to do. I want you to show this portion in Moodle. Where, where you give your answer at, I want you to type in 0.5 amps times 12 ohms equals 6 volts. I want you to show your math, okay? There, there's a place, yes, sir. there's a box that you can type all that in, in Moodle. So for every problem, I want you to do this, okay? If you will, please. Now, let's, 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 let's do another one. Let's do another one. Um, now, Hold on a minute. Hold on, hold on a minute. Let me, let me show y'all something here. Hold on a minute. Hey, come here. Come here. Yeah. Who's got who's got that costume on? Are, are you a kitty cat? No. Okay. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Okay. All right. Let's see. So, number 10, who wants to take that one? Can somebody read it? Uh, yes, sir. What current is taken by a heater with a resistance of 24 ohms when connected to a 20, a 120 volt supply? You're going to divide it. So it's 12, no, two. Now, so look. A heater, a heater, uh, 120 volt, 20, 20, 24 ohms. Five. 120, 120 volt, and then the ohms goes into here. And so what are you going to do? You're, 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 you're dividing? Yes, sir. And, and what was your answer? Five. No, hold on. Yeah, five. Five, five, what? Five, uh, I, I didn't, uh, five, uh, was it, uh, amperage, amps, five amps? Right, five amps. So look, you see what I did there? I put, you can put the 120 in there and put the 24 down there. If you plug them into the triangle and cover that up, it makes the formula obvious what you're going to do. Is, it, is that okay? Uh -huh. Yes, sir. If, if you plug the numbers in, into the triangle like that, like I'm doing, it's going to make it obvious which one do you do. And it's going to be division because they're over each other. Okay? And then, you know, here, if you see what I, what I did here? You plug them in like that, you plug the two in that you know what they are, and then the unknown when you calculate. Now, I want you to, to put this in Moodle. You can put, you can type in the screen like this. You can say 120 divide sign 24. You, now, now, you can't put the ohm symbol in there, but you could put, I guess you could put an R in there, and then equals and then 5A, okay? So I want to see this. Okay. I want to see this type in Moodle that you showed me your calculation. Actually, I would prefer to see, you know, with the R is okay. I mean, because you, you don't have an ohm symbol on your key on your keyboard, you know, you don't have that in there. So you can just put an R in that place, be fine. And I want to see the actual calculation in there. And then, um, is everybody com comfortable with that? how that's done yeah yes, yes. Sir. Any, any questions no all right let's let's go to another one here somebody dare for do this one number 11 somebody can somebody read that one Determine the resistance of a lamp that draws three amperes when connected to a 120 volt supply. 
So you're given two variables, you're given 120 volt and three amps, and you want to know the resistance of the lamp. So 120 volt and three amps. So look, you put your 120 in here, and you put your three amps in here. And then the 40. unknown, oh, the right. unknown is, so what, how do you calculate that? Divide it. You divide it, exactly. And then what, so, so what's the answer? 40. 40. 40. 40 what? Um. Exactly. Don't put 40 amps because if you put 40 amps, it's going to be half wrong. Burr, burr, burr. Okay. Now, when you put your answer in there, if you put the wrong unit, now it's half wrong. Okay. So look, the, the 120 and then the three. Look. See, I actually went in there and drew circuits in there. I drew a power supply, I drew the bulb, and I and I actually drew the circuits out on these things. That that makes it clear to me. I draw the I draw the triangles and the devices. If it's a light bulb or, or a heater element, resistor, whatever it is, you know, then I actually draw it out. If you want to, if you want to print, you know, well, you can't really uh you actually can print this out in Moodle if you wanted to and draw it if you wanted to, or just do it on scratch paper, you know, if you want to do do the drawings like what I did. But the 120 and the three right there, you know, you plug them in. And then the unknown is this one. And you you just told me it's 40 ohms, right? Yeah. So I, it, it, I want to make, I want you to, 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 to say 120 divided by three and draw it, you know, do it out longhand like that. 120 volt divided by three amps or A equals the 40. And you can put an R beside of it or the word ohms. Okay. Everybody got it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Now, then it we step it up just a little bit. Now, I know it's almost time to go. We're going to do this next one, and then we're going to stop. And I think you'll be home free being able to finish. Uh, there, there are a lot of there, – there's a lot of items in there. You know, it goes on. You know, you have all these problems right here. You've got another page of them like that. So there's – you know, you got, uh, you know, quite a few there. So here, let's slow our let's slow our brain down a little bit here. All right, do y'all see the worksheet again? Uh huh. In this one, you had 120 volt, and you had three amps, right? And you know you had what was the resistance of that of that lamp? 40, 40 ohms. 40 ohms, right? Now you want to remember that you want to keep that number. It says here, if the lamp in problem, in, 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 in the problem, then ain't the problem three, it's, it's this problem up here. That's a typo right there. And I've got that fixed in Moodle. It's in the previous problem, not problem three. If the lamp in this problem right here is connected to a 240 volt supply, what is the new value of current? And here's what you do. You take the resistance of the bulb and assume it's gonna stay the same, okay? That's something that comes with it whenever you move the bulb down to, to a different power supply. The resistance of the bulb comes with the bulb. You know what I mean? It's something that's gonna travel when you move it to another circuit, right? Yeah. So you're gonna take that 40 ohms and use it in this problem and come up with a new value of current. So now, now we're gonna say 240 volt and we know we got a bulb, but it's got 40 ohms of resistance. So let's um, let's take now we change our numbers, right? We're gonna double the voltage. Sixty. No oh, six. Two forty volt. And what was the resistance again? Forty. Forty ohms. Forty. Forty ohms. So. How do we do the math? You divide. divide it. Okay, and what does it equal? Six. Six, Six amps. Six amps. Now look, you, you you had three amps a while ago, right? 
you had three yes. amps at, at 120. Now you've got six amps at 240. So here's what happens if you double the voltage, then the amps goes up. It, the amps doubles if it's if it's, if it's a resistive load, like a bulb. If the bulb could handle a 240, you know, if it could handle. It. Now, you know, a heater element, a heater element like this, you can run it at different voltages as long as you don't exceed, you know, the maximum there of 240 there. And so there's certain types of loads like like this that can run at a very wide, you know, that can run at a wider range of voltages. And, and they're just giving you a, a, an, an example that if you double, if you double the resistance of what's going to happen to the current, okay? So, so here, I plug the 240 in and the 40, and it's giving me the six. I drew the circuit out. See there, I changed it from a, two, from a 120 volt circuit to a 240 volt. And I like drawing stuff out because if I draw it and I plug the numbers into the into the triangle, then I, I'm way less likely to make a mistake. Does that make sense? Yes. So I, I, I encourage you to do what I'm doing right here. Draw this stuff out. Draw the triangles on scratch paper. Draw the circuits out. <clears throat> you know, and you you can actually in Moodle, let me show you here in Moodle, this is a Moodle form of, of the worksheet that I've got in there now. You can actually go in there and print, you can print this, you can print this out if you wanted to. And when you get down to the, uh, when you get to the problems here, the work, you know, what we're looking at here, you know, if you print that out, if you do a hard copy, then you can draw in there for your own and keep this. If you don't, if, if you if you print them, you got something to keep beyond this class. If you don't print these, guess what happens to the worksheets after after this semester? They're going to be gone in in Moodle. You won't be able to get to them. So if you got a printer, I I would encourage you to print these for your for your use. You know, don't you, you don't want to give me the paper. But that's for you to keep, you know. And when you actually, when you finish it and complete it, you can print it, or you can print it up front and then draw your draw your triangles and draw your you know draw your circuit center like what I did. That's something you can do if you want to, and you can end up having like what I've got, something you can always keep and refer to later on, you know. So you see how I did all these. And this yes. can really help. It can really help you if you do this. I, I mean, I'm. I, I'm one that, that likes to make things uh, simple and clear, and this is the way. This is the way to do this. You know. Okay. So, do y'all feel pretty good about about doing the worksheet? Y'all feel pretty good. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Now, so um, let me back up here. You'll be fine with the rest of the worksheet. I, I'm just scrolling through what it looks like on paper. And in Moodle, it's in a Moodle format. I had to copy paste every one of these in there where you can actually do them online. And um, you know, you'll be fine with the whole worksheet. Now, when we get beyond this worksheet, when we hit chapter three, we're going to get into series circuits and it starts to get more involved. We're going to have other things tied in series and the calculations are going to get, uh, they're going to, we're going to step it up on calculations. It gets a little more involved. So this is a really good fundamental class here that, you, that you're going to understand electricity itself a lot better, a lot better if, you, if you've never taken anything like this or if you have, it's a really good refresher class. Um, so um, this this is again it is in Moodle. Um, if I if I take you back out to um, do you see my Moodle screen now? Yeah. Yeah. Go back there. 
back of there. Do you see the welcome mat now? Yeah. And if I scroll down, here's where we are right here. If you don't have the book, if you don't have the book, you see my mouse moving around right there? Yeah. You can yep. download you can download chapter two copy. I, if I click that, you see that right there pop up? You see the uh, the pop up? Yeah. You see the book copy? I got the book copy in there. I scanned it. I scanned it and put it in there for you if you ain't got the book yet. Now, if you don't have the book, try to get it. And they should be in the bookstore. And if they happen to be out, let me know. We can order, okay? Here, the worksheet, I'm going to open it up. If I go there and do, I have to hit preview. Then there goes your, your questions there. That's about the Adam, Adam stuff. And uh, you get down to, you're going to write the definition of voltage. Do you see me going through the worksheet now? Uh -huh. You do? Yes. Now, you get down to um, here. State Ohm's Law in words, fully and completely. Now, Ohm's Law, I, I, did, I did not state it. Now, when, when you state it, and we need to state it here, it, being that you're still in here for a minute. When you go to page 11 in the book, it says this. This is important. Ohm's law, can you can you read that? Yes. Ohm's law states this. Now listen, this law comes in two parts. Part one says this that in any electrical circuit, the current or the amps is directly directly proportional to the voltage applied to the circuit. Now stop right there. It says the current is directly proportional to the voltage applied to the circuit. Now Here's what it means now. We just illustrated that. If you look, you have a circuit here. Th this circuit that had a 40 ohm, a 40 ohm load there. At 120 volts, you drew three amps. Now, when you double the voltage, what happened to the amps? It doubled, Double. right? It doubled. So look. The current, the amps in the circuit is directly proportional to the voltage. If I double the voltage, then the amps doubles to the current doubles. It goes from three amps to six amps, right? Yes. That's the first half of Ohm's law. It's the first half of Ohm's law. The second half of Ohm's law says this. The current is directly proportional to the voltage applied to the circuit. And then the word and. I'm going to go in there and circle the and because the and is where the dividing line is. Go in your book and put and in there. And the second half of Ohm's law is after that. And it says this. That the current. The current is inversely proportional to the resistance in the circuit or in opposite proportion. The current is directly proportional to voltage, but the current is inversely proportional to resistance. The current is directly proportional to the voltage in the circuit and is inversely proportional to the resistance. So it means that the current is going to go in the opposite direction of the resistance. Okay, if you change resistance in the circuit, then if you if you go up in resistance, the current's going to go down. If you raise resistance, the amps is going to go down. If you raise voltage, the current or the amps is going to go up, right? So if, if I raise voltage, the amps is going to go up. But if I raise resistance in that circuit, the amps is going to go down inversely, okay? Everybody got that? Yes, sir. So basically, 
tell, I want you to tell me what would happen right here on this circuit, right off the top of your head. Now here, this load here has 40 ohms. Now what happens if I double that and I go 80 ohms on, on, on the load here? What happens to the current? It's going to drop. If, if this becomes 80 right here, if I put 80 in there, and I don't know what the amps is, if I put 80 in there, if I cross it out and I put 80 ohms in there, 80 ohms, then the current's going to be what? E over I, right? I mean, E over R, right? Mm -hmm. So, What's the, what's, the, what's the current now if I have 80 ohms of resistance out here? What's 120 divided by 80? One and a half. One and a half. One and a half amps, right? So look, when the resistance yeah. goes up, when the resistance goes up, the amps goes down, okay? So resistance and amps are, they are inversely proportional. If you raise the resistance, the amps goes down. That makes sense? Yes, sir. So that, that's the, the second half of Ohm's law is related to resistance. If you change the resistance, now, now, now on the other hand, on the other hand, look, 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 look what would happen here. What if I change that from 40 ohms to 20 ohms? I actually dropped the resistance in half, and I changed that load to a to, to a twenty a twenty ohm load out there. These six amps. Exactly. If I drop it to that, it's going to be six amps. So look, whichever direction you go with resistance, the amps is going to go the opposite way. That's called in, in, an inverse relationship. Okay. Everybody got that. I think most people who work, uh, have left. Yeah, I see you and Victor there, but and it's fine. I mean, we're, we're recording. They can go back and watch it. But I, I wanted to to discuss Ohm's law itself because you you need to be able to actually uh, define that. And I didn't really I didn't really I didn't define it, and and I just realized that I had overlooked that. So in in Moodle right here, you see in Moodle. It says state Ohm's law in words fully and completely. So you want to write the, the entire Ohm's law down, you know, verbatim, you know, there. Mm -hmm. and, and then here, you're going to write those three formulas in here that you get out of the triangle. The three basic formulas that you get out of the triangle, you know, put those in there. And then uh, you can name the instruments that you use to check volts, current, and resistance. That'll be a voltmeter, ammeter, and an ohmmeter. And then you, when you get down to calculations in there, here, a trouble light's got 12 ohms and a half an amp. What voltage must be applied? You're gonna you're gonna write your formula right in here in the answer, okay? And then here's another one. So you're gonna do do your uh, type in your your complete equation in here with an answer, <laughs> and go. I, I had to, I copy pasted all this stuff in there. You know, has to be so you can do it online. Everybody good? Yes, sir. Great. I think I think you're going to ace this thing. And then um, next week, we'll, you know, we'll we'll cover chapter three on series circuits. Uh, <clears throat> on Thursday, we'll um. And what we may do, we may actually get into it. We may actually get into chapter three while you're here Tuesday. Uh, I'm I'm thinking of doing maybe some blended stuff. Uh, doing uh, partly book and partly hands-on uh, to, to get to get further in the book quicker, you know. Instead of waiting to every Thursday to even move forward in the book at all, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think we'll do that. I think we'll cover part of, of three and do some hands-on Tuesday. Um, so, so anyway, um, the... The Ohm's Law formulas, I've got them right in here. If you didn't get a sheet, if you look right here, if you, if, do you see the uh, my Moodle page again? Yeah. Do, if you click here, there goes the formulas. You see that? 
Mm-hmm. So I've got those as a download. There's a PDF. You can download that PDF to your phone too. You know, you can put them on your phone, your smartphone, and, and your computer. And so all of these downloads, you need to go. You can go ahead and do. There's Ohm's law, the definition of voltage and current. There's that one. And then there's uh, metric prefixes I put in there for you. It shows about the milli and the K and the mega and all that stuff, all that's in there. And then uh, uh, electric code stuff that we're going to get into also. So um, all of those in there you can download. And um, anyway, um, let's see. I say we're, we're, we're fine to go ahead and end the, end the session. Let me... Um, and I'm not trying to keep holding anybody over, but I, but I did want to cover that amount there. Even though people had to leave, it's fine. They can go back and watch the tail end of it on the recording. So I'll upload this um, when it finishes. It's going to be in Moodle later today, the link. And um, so uh, thanks, Roger, for joining. And uh, everybody else is gone. So you're a real trooper, man. Thank you. God bless you, man. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good weekend. Good see you. And uh, are you are you still are you helping Andy now? Any now? Yeah, I'm still helping. I want to be working with him uh, Wednesdays and Fridays. When? Wednesdays and Fridays. Great, great. That's great, man. You tell him I said hey, and I, I appreciate him. Uh, I appreciate him letting you work, and I appreciate you doing the work. You know, you're you're mm-hmm. putting it into practice. You know. You know. Yeah. That's, Right, they nothing like really putting it out there and putting it to use, the the really get it settled with you. You know how to do things. So, have a nice weekend, and uh, we'll see you Tuesday. We'll see you Tuesday here. Okay. All righty, Derwood. See you next Tuesday. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a nice weekend. Bye bye. And any any of you that are watching uh, the recording, um, you can you know call me. You got my number. Text, call. Uh, you can contact me during the weekend. I don't really shut things off to the weekend. I mean, I'm, I'm available then too. If you got questions about as you're working on the worksheet, be fine. And, um, ask any questions when you're here, uh, for Jamie and any of you that, 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 that are not able to, to be, uh, live with zoom, just get you, jot your questions down and, uh, and we'll, we'll get it all cleared up. Um, and uh, thanks for watching. Y'all have a blessed weekend. Bye.